What's up guys, it's Blaze from Funbox here. And before I get started with this video, can you, I don't know if you guys can hear that, but that's my chair. Uh, the leather is starting to go bad and so I probably have to replace that as well. Uh, but uh, anyway, in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to start sending data back and forth between units. I figured that the best thing that uh, we can do for now is actually get some basic unit selection going and getting animations to play. And so that in the next video, actually sending numbers through in terms of damage numbers, getting those sent through would be a lot easier for us. So let's get started. Um, uh, just before we get, just before we do start writing code, I might fast forward some bits here, uh, just so that I can cut down on the, uh, on the play time here. So let's get started with two new variables. The first one, actually, you know what? I'm gonna write the variables first and then I'll explain it after. All right, so with these two, wait, what's that? Okay, that's fine. With these two variables, we are going to, with this one anyway, we are going to control our step event even more than we already are. Um, and so we know that we have a process phase here and this flag will control whether we can go past that phase or not. This one here will actually be the target that we are going to attack. For now, we are just going to set it to just some random unit or not a random unit. It'll just be a unit that we pull from the list and eventually it'll be replaced with another list. But for now, just to get the base functionality in, we will just leave it as a single ID. All right, so in our step event, what we're going to do is go down to process, which I'm already at, which is good. And we're going to take this variable here. And like I said, we're going to use it to control the process phase. And basically all it is is if process finish, then we go into the next phase, which is check finish. However, for us to be able to loop through these phases properly, we need to make sure that we take this process finished and set it back to false because we don't want to end up skipping through there. For that, you can choose to do it either in check finish or end turn. It's completely up to you. For me, however, I'm going to put my uh, flag here and check finish. And so process finish, we're just gonna set it to false and that's it. All right, that that's, that should be everything that we need to do for step. Uh, let's go ahead and go into the GUI just so that we can debug which unit is being selected, right? So that we know. So don't worry about the spelling that I have, but uh, eventually, like I said, we're going to have a list so that we can have multi-target attacks. <clears throat> um, that should be it. Yeah, that looks just fine. Let's go ahead into, actually, you know what? Let's uh, do the left click event here. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to assign a target because right now there's no one selected and we haven't really got anything going yet. So just like before, I'm going to fast forward this bit and then I'll explain the code after I finish typing it in. All right, so that looks good. Let me just check that. Yeah, it looks good. So we're gonna run a loop where we go through the entire units list. And then we're going to check to see if with each unit, what we're going to do is we're gonna say, hey, is this ID the same as the currently selected unit? Because we don't want the guy that we're controlling right now to be able to attack themselves. 
unless you want that uh, particular feature. Regardless of that, if it isn't the same ID, then we're going to set, we're going to set the target to be this unit right here, okay? There's one line that I forgot and that is to break because we just want to find the very first unit, which is generally going to be in the list, the next unit down, right? Generally speaking. So uh, from the selected unit. And so once we've found that, we just need to break out of the loop and it's done. All right, so if we try playing the game, we click and we can see now that our selected target is, it's currently set, but, uh, and that's because we are locked into phase three, which is actually the, uh, which is the process uh, phase here. This is stage three. Uh, to get through that, we need to finish the rest of this section. But let me just fix that bit before. And to finish this section, what we actually need to do is we need to do a fair bit of uh, code writing here. In the player hurt, we're going to add in a new um, broadcast. This broadcast message will be called uh, unit hurt. We're gonna call it unit hurt, but strictly speaking, you can name it whatever you want. That's totally fine. We're just gonna add that in now. A brief note, I want the broadcasts to be the last thing that plays in any particular animation. Now, you can actually have in more recent versions of GMS2, you can actually have broadcasts per sprite, and that's totally fine. Um, but when I made this, or when I made my version of this, uh, that wasn't implemented yet. So let's work with this uh, version. You can if you want. The only issue that you will face if you want to use the broadcast per sprite is you won't be able to use um, the moments. So just keep that in mind. All right, moving on, we have the unit hurt uh, broadcast now. And so for our broadcast message, we need to create a new case. And so for this case, we're going to say for unit hurt, um, it's just gonna be a single line and it's process finished. We're just gonna set that to true, just like that, all done. So, well, we're not done yet, we're not done yet. So the next step is to go into our helper script. Here we're going to call a, we're gonna write a new function here. Uh, this function, we'll call it unit attack. It's gonna take no parameters. And just like I did with the for loop before, I'm going to fast forward this section and then explain everything after I finish typing it out. All right, uh, this looks good. Um, don't worry about the warning that you get here. Uh, that's just GMS saying that we aren't using it anywhere else. So basically what we're doing is, the first thing that we're going to do is we need to check if the attack will hit to begin with. Because if we just call this function without this check, it's just going to hit every single time. So we need to first check to see if the attack will hit. And then what we're going to do is with the selected target, in this case, just the one. We're going to change the state to hurt, but we're also going to change the head position of our sequence, which is this thing here. We're going to set it to the start of the hurt animation, right? And I got all of that information from the uh, child object here. So unit sequence here and hurt start down here. All right, that's good. We can close that off now because we don't need it. But that's basically what we're going to do. Now, before we can actually do anything with that, 
we need to call the function itself using another moment. Instead of playing it at 65, however, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to play it. Uh, I'm going to call the function one frame before we call the actual broadcast. And hopefully, actually, you know what? I'll put it two frames behind just to be safe. I am going to call the unit tag just here and click OK. And everything should be fine. But I can tell you now that there is one bug in our system. And hopefully, we'll be able to see what happens. There we go. So what just happened here was the unit that attacked missed. And you can see now that we're stuck in combat phase three. The problem with that is because here, we're checking to see if we're sending an attack and things like that. And here for unit hurt, we are moving into process finished. However, however, if we miss, then this this line, this flag will never flip to true. Because remember, if we are in the step event in process finished, we're waiting to see if process finished is true or not. And unfortunately, if we miss our attack, it's never going to happen. So what we're going to do here is in the broadcast message, we are going to flip the uh, this process finish to true if we miss, right? So again, I'm going to fast forward this section, type it out, and then I'll explain it after. All right, so yeah, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory, I hope, but uh, if we miss, then process finished will be set to true. Eventually, we could of course just uh, use player miss, the miss animation here, and just send um, that flag, uh, flip that flag uh, through there. But for now, let's just uh, keep it simple. I just wanna keep it simple and eventually we'll come back and clean this up a bit more. For now, we'll just leave it here where basically we check if the attack will hit, then process finished will be set to true. Let's try playing the game now. And hopefully every time a new, a new unit is selected, then we have the green arrow and the phase will be at two. Okay, everything seems to work just fine. Occasionally they'll miss and occasionally they'll hit, which is good. And you can see that units are being hurt. And yeah, like I said before, it's generally going to be the target for now is going to be the unit that's basically next in line in the list. Or in the case of it being the last unit here, it's going to be at the very top. But that's totally fine. One thing that you can change really quickly is in the step event with um, this selected targets, what you can do just to make sure that things get cleared or variables get cleared at the end of every turn is right after selected finish, we can just set the selected targets to no one, essentially clearing uh, whoever was selected. And so if we play the game again, after each turn, this selected target will go from a target to negative four, which is uh, no one in GMS. And there you go, you see that it had a target and then it changed. Had a target, then it changed. Target, change, target, change. All right, so everything everything should be working just fine. I hope. <laughs> um, but right, everything looks fine. Um, I don't see anything wrong with it, hopefully. But uh, that's that's basically it. In the next video, like we now have what? We now have the ability to play some animations based on hits, uh, hits or misses. And our system works with hit and miss attacks. Uh, we can also select units, although even, even though right now the unit selection is very simple. And so naturally in the next step, we're going to be able to send actual data, actual numbers from one unit to another, right? But that's gonna be in the next video. One quick note I want to mention. This code here and 
the manager's broadcast message here. It is a bit rough um, because like I said, I want to, maybe not so much this one, but definitely for the manager here, this needs to change. But keep in mind that we do have an animation for missing our attacks. We will get to implementing that animation soon enough. For now, what we're going to do is just make sure that we have data getting sent back and forth, and we will tackle that in the next video. So if you guys haven't already subscribed, I suggest you do and turn on notifications if you guys want to stay up to date with these videos. For now though, that's all from me. Thank you guys for your patience. I know these uploads are getting a bit slow, but um, that's why I had the video that I posted a few, a few videos back now and uh, thank you very much for being patient with me and following me with this series anyway that's it for this video i hope to see you in the next one <sighs> bye bye